Welcome to our new library user orientation. Um, if you're not a new library user, that's okay. We're going to be covering a lot of basics. So this will hopefully be helpful whether you've had your library card uh, for one day or for 15 years. Um, so speaking of which, I do kind of want to see who we have tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll to ask um, how long people have had a library card. And so while you answer that, I'm just going to get started with a little introduction. Um, as we go through the presentation tonight, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box. I'll get to them at the end. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to leave ample time for questions. Um, the chat is on, so you're welcome to chat with each other. Um, I might not be able to monitor the chat the entire time, so if you have a question you want me to answer, please make sure you put it in the Q&A box so that I don't miss it. Um, you can use the chat to ask each other questions or, you know, share your favorite library tips or react to the information I'm giving you. Um, so, okay, thanks for answering the poll. It looks like we have quite a range um, from brand new users to users that have been with us for quite a while. So thank you for coming tonight. All right. Uh, so first up, I'm just going to quickly go over um, what we're going to do tonight. So that was the introduction. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about basics about the library, some of which you may have learned when you got your library card, but just in case. Um, and then I'm going to go over the actual library website and catalog. So I'm just going to open up my internet browser and navigate through the website and catalog with you to show you some tips and how to use it. Um, that's going to include some of our e-resources, how to search for books in the catalog, and also how to find our event calendar, because I know those are the three things people are probably looking for the most. Um, and at the end, we're going to talk about just how cool libraries are. And uh, I just want to remind you that we're free, which we'll talk about a little bit on the next slide. So first, welcome to the Santa Clara City Library. Um, so we do have three library locations. We have the Central Park Library on Homestead. That's our main big building. We also have the Mission Branch Library over by the university. And we have the North Side Branch Library, which is on the north side of town. Um, and we have a bookmobile. So we do have a mobile library that drives around the city limits and visits schools, uh, the senior center, um, neighborhood events. If you ever go to like city events um, or festivals, you might see the bookmobile there. Um, one thing that I wanted to note is that we are the Santa Clara City Library. We are not the Santa Clara County Library. And so the reason I say that is we live in an area that um, is very fortunate to have a lot of great public libraries, but it can cause confusion um, because people think that like they're trying to get on the city website using their county card or they're trying to get on the county website using their city card. So, you know, if you're trying to log into something and your card number is not working, maybe first check to make sure you're at the city library and not the county library. Um, if your number starts with a 233, you have a county card. If it's a 25119, it's a city card. And you can have both cards. That's totally fine too. But I just wanted to share that because that causes a lot of confusion if you're Googling Santa Clara Library. Um, also, with our physical locations, I wanted to note that at here at Central Park Library, we do have a dedicated technology center. So it's a computer lab on the first floor, and they actually wanted me to let you know about them, that they're here, um, and they're happy to help with tech questions. Um, our branches also offer tech help, but it just might be more limited. Um, if you have a specific tech question, you can always call your local branch ahead of time to see if they can help you with it. Um, but yeah, the Tech Center is a great resource. It's always open when the library is open. Um, and then, yeah, all of our locations are open six days a week. You can borrow 99 physical items at a time. That's not even counting like ebooks and other things you can borrow. Uh, we may have some limits on certain items, like you can't borrow 99 DVDs at a time. Um, but total, you can have 99 items and all 99 can be books if you'd like. Um, so a little couple, did you know, you can return items at any city library location, regardless of where you borrowed. So if you borrow from the bookmobile, you can return to central. If you borrow from central, you can return to north side. Again, just make sure it is a city library. If you're returning to a county library, um, hopefully we'll get the books back eventually, but that's not a guarantee. Um, we also have a ton of stuff that you can borrow that's not books. So we have video games. Uh, we have coding kits, which is actually laptops that you can check out that have coding software on them to teach you how to code. Um, we have tools. We have passes to state and county parks. The county parks is something brand new that we're offering. Uh, it's just started last month. 
Um, you can access the New York Times online. Um, I'm going to go through some of that later because just because there's so much I can't cover it in one slide. Um, and then another thing that I really wanted you all to know is that the library is free. So sometimes people will ask, you know, oh, how much does this event cost? All of our events are free. Everything you borrow is free. Um, the only exception is if you do not return something. So you'll see here that we have no late fees. So if you return an item late um, and it's one of our items, uh, we do not charge you for that. However, if you don't return something at all, you will get billed for it. Um, so if you have a fee, that's probably why. Um, and then also I just wanted to note that we do have automatic renewals for most of our items. So if you check something out and nobody's waiting for it, it will automatically renew four times. So including your initial checkout period, you get to keep things for like 15 weeks. Um, if something doesn't renew, that means that we need it back because somebody's waiting for it. Um, or it's not a renewable item. So this is just a good time to remind you, you know, just please return your items on time because if it's not renewing, somebody else is probably waiting for it. And so we wanna make sure that things are available to the whole community. Um, also quickly, if you ever have questions and you call the library, um, these are the options you're gonna have. And so sometimes people, you know, I'll answer the phone and they say, oh, I'm not sure if I got the right department. So just so you know, these are the different uh, units within the library. So if you have a question about your account, so you don't know your PIN or you need to reset your PIN, your library card's not working, you have a question about holds, due dates, renewals, items that you've checked out, for your library account, you're gonna wanna talk to circulation. And that's two on the phone tree. Um, if you have questions about a program for adults um, at Central Park Library, if you have a reference question for adults, um, questions services for adults, you'll want to talk to adult services, which is also called reference, and that's the department that I'm in. Um, if you have questions about youth or teen or family events at Central Park Library, um, or questions about youth, teen, or family, you'll want to talk to our youth, teen, and family services department. And then, of course, if you have questions for your specific branch or a program at a branch, uh, you can call Mission or Northside um, directly. So all of those numbers are there. Uh, one quick tip that makes it really easy, and you can do this with all of your library cards if you have multiple library cards, like make a note on your phone or take a picture of your library card, because then if you come into the library and you don't have the physical card with you, you can still use the number to log into a computer, or you can type the number into our self-checkout machines and check out books. Um, so I just recommend, you know, keeping your library card number on you in case you don't have the physical card for some reason, and that can be really helpful. Uh, we can also look you up with a photo ID if you don't have your library card with you. All right, so now we're going to switch over to the actual website. So let me stop sharing and then reshare again. All right, so now you should see this is what our library page looks like. So again, you wanna make sure you're on the Santa Clara City Library website. You can see up here, it's sclibrary.org. Um, this is our homepage. So some easy buttons on the homepage of stuff that you might use a lot. If you don't have a library card yet, you probably do since you're here, but if you don't have one yet, you can click get a card. There's a short application you can fill out before you come into the library to make getting your card even easier. If you wanna check out our bookmobile schedule, you can do that here, our locations and hours. Uh, this page, current services, just kind of shows you like an overview of library services. So it has our hours and it also talks about frequently asked questions you might have, you know, how to place a hold, how to pick up a hold, which we'll cover in just a little bit. Um, digital library, if you wanna make donations, um, if you need to contact us. So that's kind of an overview page. Um, and then this one rotates. So our tax prep actually just ended for the season. So we'll probably be putting something else up here soon, maybe for like summer adventure um, or our next big initiative that we have coming up. Um, also my account all the way on the left, we'll cover a little bit later when we get into the catalog. So I will cover that. I just wanted to show you briefly all of these options at the top. So books and more is where you're gonna find a lot of stuff. Um, you could search the catalog from here. Link Plus is a very cool tool that we have where it searches other libraries that we have borrowing agreements with. 
So it searches libraries throughout California, and this includes um, maybe libraries that aren't public libraries, so like university libraries. So maybe you're looking for a textbook. Uh, we as a public library are not going to carry a lot of textbooks just because that's not really the um, community that we're serving or the service we're providing. So, but if you need like a technical book or an academic book, we might be able to borrow it from a university library. So we can always search Link Plus and see if we have it. Also, just if the book that um, you want, if it's checked out at our library and you don't want to wait for it and it's available right now at another library, you can borrow it through Link Plus. Um, so Link Plus is great and you get to pick it up at the Santa Clara City Library. You get to check it out with your Santa Clara City Library card. Um, the only thing to note is that because it's not our book, you may be charged late fees. Um, so just, you know, be aware of that. And if you lose the book, it's a pretty hefty fee because, again, it's not our book. So just something to keep in mind when using it. But it's a really great resource because we don't have every single book, unfortunately. Um, other things here, book match. If you're looking for reading recommendations, you can fill out this form and a librarian will send you a list of books that they think you might like. Um, you can see here we have all kinds of programs. Digital library, that's where a lot of our e-resources are. Research tools, so I'm going to get into this in just a bit. Research by subject or A to Z resources. Um, earlier I was talking about all the stuff we have that's not books or DVDs, that's more like unique. If you look under lending library, you can see we have tools, we have video games, um, we have hiking poles and hiking backpacks and parks passes and all kinds of stuff you can find here. Um, and then we also have books in languages that are not English. Um, so coming back over here to the research tools, if you know what tool you're looking for, like, oh, I want, um, I want the New York Times online. If you know what you're looking for, I recommend going to A to Z resources and then just going to that letter. N, New York Times Online, great, here are the links, and we have a little description of how to use it, and we also have a lot of uh, YouTube videos showing you how to use different resources. So if you know what you're looking for, I recommend using the A to Z. If you don't know exactly what you're looking for, um, I recommend using research by subject, because maybe you just know, oh, I'm trying to get a job, and I'm looking for job help, or maybe you know, oh, I want to learn another language, I'm looking for language help. So in that case, go to research by subject. And then, for example, here, ESL language learning and travel. You're like, mm, I want to learn Russian. You come on to here um, and go down Mango languages, learn to speak a language. And they have like 70 different languages in here. And then a really cool feature about this is you can also learn English as a second language, but in your native language, um, which is pretty helpful. Um, there's not quite 70 languages for that one, but I think there are about 20. And again, we have a video tutorial of how to use it. Um, so all of this stuff is free, but again, you have to access it through our library website so that it knows that you're a library user, because some of these are also apps that you could download and pay for. So you just want to make sure that you're getting your free access with your library card. And like another example in A to Z e-resources, a really popular one we have is LinkedIn Learning. So, you know, you might know that LinkedIn Learning actually has a cost. If you just go to LinkedIn Learning website and try to use it, they're going to ask you for a credit card because it's paid. So you want to go to it through our website, and then it'll tell you how to log in with your library card, and then you get it for free. Okay. Um, moving on with the website services. Again, we have public printing at the library. You can copy. You can scan. Um, we have all kinds of different programs. Um, yeah, we have citizenship programs and resources here. Here's a lot of other services we have. Um, so you can check these out. Special delivery for homebound. That would be if you or someone you know lives in the city of Santa Clara and cannot physically visit the library for some reason. Um, we can set you up on a delivery program to get books delivered once a month, which is pretty cool. Um, Retrotech, this is super popular. This is a weekly program where if you have like VHS tapes, or photographs or other more analog materials. Uh, you can bring them in and digitize them. Um, so we just have a lot of stuff here. And honestly, this, this program would be way too long if I tried to cover everything. So um, quickly, kids and teens, uh, our calendar. So calendar is very popular. If you just go to events, you'll see our whole calendar right here. These are all the events we have this month. You can also uh, narrow it down over here on the left. If you only wanna see kids stuff, kids events. You only want to see teen stuff. 
you only want to see adult stuff, that's fine. Um, we also have a printable event calendar. So if you click on that, here's our printable event calendar. And it has youth and family on one side, and then it has adult on the other. So you can also pick this up at the library, but if you just want to print this and stick it on your fridge, you can do that too. Um, let's see what else. Okay, about us, that's going to have the contact us. I covered our phone numbers earlier today. Um, we also have different things here. If you just want to make a suggestion or comment, you can do that online. Um, if you want to ask us to buy something for the library that we don't have, you can do that here. Um, if you want to work with the library on a program, you can do that here. Um, and ask a librarian would just be like, if you have another question, like maybe a research question or um, how to, anything about the library, really, um, you can use ask a librarian and we'll get it to the right people. Uh, if you want to work for the library or volunteer for the library, that's also here. So yeah, I think that's most of what I wanted to show you on the website. Um, oh, one other thing before we go to the catalog. So we have um, study rooms at all three of our libraries, Central Park, Northside, and Mission. Um, so if you go to services, and then you come down here in the bottom right to book a room, uh, you can actually book these rooms a week in advance. We do recommend that because if you come into the library and nobody's using a room, we can just make you a reservation right there. But if you have, you know, a Zoom call or a study group or something that you know the date and time, we definitely recommend coming online and booking it ahead of time to make sure you can get that spot. You can see here, you can do it one week in advance. Um, you can book it for up to one hour, only one hour. Um, if you make a longer reservation, it's just going to be shortened to the first hour. Um, also, only one booking a day. Um, and then if you haven't shown up after 15 minutes, we do cancel it because they are in demand and somebody else might want to come use it. Um, just make sure you review that before you book. Um, and when you click on the button, I just want to show you because this is a little bit counterintuitive, but you have to scroll all the way down. So... Don't use this little thing to ask for a room because all it's going to do is send a message asking for a room. If you just scroll down, you can see here um, the room times that are available. Book it, book it, book it, and you'll be able to go a week out. So that's another popular service that we have. All right. I'm just going to double check the chat really quick before I move on. Okay, no questions. Great. And no questions in the Q&A. Okay, just remember, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A, and I'll get to them at the end. All right, so next we're going to talk about um, the catalog. So this is how you're going to search for a book. Um, so from our homepage, you can go ahead and search here if you want. So I'm going to pick a book that I know is pretty popular right now, just because I want to show you some different things you can do. So if you search up here, it'll automatically take you to our catalog. If you'd like, you can also go to Books and More, search the catalog, and that will take you here to our homepage. Um, so on our homepage, you can see we have like staff lists up here. So we're always creating new like recommended reads or thematic lists that you can see up here. Um, you can see we also have a lot of the same links that we have on our homepage. So you can get to eBooks from here. You can get to our online resources from here, our calendar, hours. Um, and then a lot of this other stuff is just like user generated content. So like if a user reviews a book or something, it'll show up here. Um, but really most of what you want are these recommended lists and this menu up here. And then again, you can just search in the catalog at the top. So uh, here's a book. It's very popular right now, like I said. So you can see here, it has 31 holds on eight copies. So this always just kind of helps you see, like you can guess how long is it gonna take me to get this? People can check it out for three weeks. Hopefully they return it on time. Um, and in between, it can be on hold for up to a week. So you can kind of do the math there. If it says available but not holdable, you can still place a hold on this book. Just click this green place hold button. Log in with your library card and pin. And then it's going to ask you, where do you want to pick it up? So you wanna pick it up at Central Park Library, Bookmobile, Mission, or Northside. Remember that once it's on hold for you, we only hold it for a week. So make sure you pick somewhere that you can pick it up. Also, if you always use the Mission Branch, when you log into this and you say Mission Branch, you can click here, enable single click holds. And from now on, every time you place something on hold, it's just gonna have it go to Mission. So that's really easy if you use one library. I'm not gonna do that right now because this is a test account, but I just wanted to show you that pick up at Mission Branch. And then you click place hold. 
and now you're in line. Um, you might see here, so it said it wasn't holdable and people sometimes think that means you can't place a hold. What that actually means is the available copy is not holdable. So I'm glad that this one happens to have an available copy so I can show you how this works. Um, so you're gonna click view location availability, which again is really important because maybe you're at Central Park Library and it says a book is available and you can't find it on the shelf. It might be because it's available at Northside or Mission or the Bookmobile. So we can see this one, the only available copy we have is Bookmobile Lucky Day. So if you see Lucky Day or um, at Mission, it's called browsing. So if you see Lucky Day or browsing, that means that you can't place a hold on those items. They're like skip the line copies. Um, and you literally just see if you got lucky. So you come to the library and we have a lucky day display and it's usually popular books that people are waiting for. But if you see the book there, you can just check it out and take it home. It still lasts for three weeks. Um, and then, you know, you get to skip the line, which is a pretty neat feature. And you can check ahead of time to see if one's available. But again, you can't like call ahead and hold it. You just have to show up and check it out. Um, otherwise, it shows you, you know, where, where the different copies are. Um, but these are all checked out right now. We also have books in multiple formats. So this is our regular print book. We also have um, audiobook CDs. So those are like physical CDs that you're gonna put in a CD player and listen to. We have a downloadable audiobook, which is like on an app. Um, and this usually means either Hoopla or Libby. Those are our two ebook and e-audiobook apps. I also wanna show you this massive number is scary. 532 holds. You're gonna think, I'm never gonna get that book. but for Libby, we're actually part of like a shared group of libraries where we all share titles. So um, if you see this 532, that's like 532 people in all the libraries that we share with are waiting. Some of these copies are Santa Clara copies. So we do have Santa Clara copies that we buy that Santa Clara patrons will get first. Um, so don't let this number scare you. It's almost always going to be faster than this. Um, but the line still can be long because even though it's an ebook or an e audiobook, only one person can check it out at a time. Um, same thing with the ebook here. You know, it's a big scary number. It probably is going to be a wait because it's a popular book, but it's not going to be that long of a wait. And we have large, large print items. So I just want to show you all of those. Um, maybe you're not looking for a specific a book, maybe you're just looking for a subject. So like you want books on flower arranging. So you search for that. And then I just wanna show you the filters over here. So you can see ways you can narrow stuff down. So you can see here that books and eBooks came up in your search. Um, and sometimes people say, I don't want an eBook, I only want books. Great, just check book. It's gonna refresh the page and it's only gonna show you the books. Maybe also you only want something you can check out today. If you come up here to available now and you're at the north side branch and you're like i only want books that i can check out today from the north side branch okay so oh and then see so maybe some of these are coming up in other languages well maybe you only want a book in english great there's there's your option um how you find books in the library is with this number right here so see but view location availability we're checking so we're at the north side branch great this call number is how you find books in the library. So you can always ask a staff member for help, um, but this is how you find the book in the library and it will be in order and we have signage around the library. Um, but you know, you can just ask a staff member like, hey, how do the numbers work? And we can give you a quick layout. So in the future, it's faster for you to be able to find the books. Um, also maybe like, I wanna show you something that has more filter options. So maybe you want a cookbook. That's like very broad, right? So you can see here, you can pick again, available now. You can pick the format of the book. Like we have all these different formats. Um, you can also say maybe, maybe you want cookbooks for children. You can check that there. Um, maybe you only want new cookbooks. So you're a cookbook aficionado and you've already read all the cookbooks and you only want cookbooks in 2024. So these filters can be really, really useful for narrowing stuff down. Um, so I'm just checking my notes to make sure I'm covering everything. So the next thing I wanted to show is, oh, your account. So I had mentioned earlier that I'd show you how to access your account. So once you're logged in here, um, or actually let's go back, let me log out so I can show you again. So we're gonna log out. We're gonna go back to our homepage here. So if you go to my account, click on my account, it's gonna take you to the catalog. 
You're going to log in with your barcode and your PIN. And then once you're logged in, um, you're going to see up here in the top right, SC, like this is going to be your username that you create the first time you log in. So like I said, this is a shared account. Um, and you have a lot of different options here that you can look at. Um, if you go to checked out, it's going to show you the stuff you have checked out, which I don't have anything right now. Um, it's also going to show you on hold over here. So remember, we put this on hold earlier. Um, this is a good opportunity for me to show you. So now I'm going on vacation. And I'm not actually going to be able to pick up this book. So I don't want it to come in for me because if it comes in for me and I miss it, I'm going to lose my spot in line and I want to save my spot in line. So just click pause, hold. Great. And now your hold is paused. So whenever you come back from vacation or maybe you just have too much to read or whatever it is, whenever you're ready to get it again. So now like you're going to keep your spot in line. So you're gonna keep moving up in line, but when you get to number one, you'll just hold there. You'll hold at number one until the book is ready for you. So you won't lose your spot, um, which is really nice. So say now you're back from vacation and you're ready, just resume hold. And now your hold is uh, active again. And you can tell, cause right here it says not ready. So it means you're in line, but it's not ready yet. Also now you decided uh, you just couldn't wait and you bought the book or a friend let you borrow it, or you don't wanna read it anymore. So when you don't want it anymore, just click cancel hold. If you want to keep it for later, um, there are these shelves that our catalog has completed in progress for later. You don't have to use these, but some people like to use them to keep track of maybe something that you want to read later. Um, but it is telling you here that you're going to be removed and you're going to lose your hold position. And that's okay because this was just a test. So I'm going to cancel my hold. Great. Um, one important thing that I want to show you, because people ask about this a lot, uh, I know the world we live in now, we're just used to everybody tracking us, right? So everybody has all of our information and they know what we've been doing. Um, at the library, we really respect your privacy. That's like one of our core tenets is that we want to respect the privacy of library patrons. So we do not track the books that you've checked out. We have a list of the books you have checked out now, you know, in case they're late or they don't come back or something. Um, but it's not like we can give you a list of all the books you've checked out from the library because we don't keep that information. But you can keep that information if you choose. But you have to opt in, again, to protect your privacy. So a lot of people do want to do this. So over here on the left, where you see borrowing history, and again, we got to this from the top right. We went to my borrowing, checked out. And then over here on the left, borrowing history. So this is the default. Borrowing history is not enabled. So if you want to keep a list of the books you check out from the library, actually items like DVDs and stuff will be on there too. Click enable borrowing history. And now it's enabled. Only items that have been returned since the feature was enabled will be listed here. Because again, we don't have a record of all the stuff you've borrowed. So it's not gonna go back and import all of your information. It's just from today on, now that it's enabled, it's gonna track what you've borrowed. So that's something that a lot of people do want, but you have to opt in, which is why I wanted to show you that. Okay, we covered all of these things. Great. Um, so now I'm going to switch back to my uh, screen, my slides. That was kind of just like an overview of the website or catalog. Again, if there was something you wanted to learn how to do um, that we didn't cover, then please let me know. Okay, I lost my slides. <laughs> okay, again, please use the Q&A feature. Go ahead and put your questions in there because I think we are going to have a lot of time for questions, which is great. Um, here we go. Here it is. Okay, so hopefully you see my slide again. Um, so yes, this is what I want to talk about. Libraries are cool. So uh, we do, I mentioned earlier a couple of the cool things we have. Seed Library is one of the things. So at Central Park Library on the second floor, this is pretty popular. We actually have a little um, seed library right by the reference desk. You can just ask if you don't see it, but we have flowers and vegetables and fruits and um, the seeds are free. You don't need a library card to check them out. You just take the seeds that you want and you take them home. And the only thing we ask is that if your plants are successful, 
Um, and if your seeds, you know, propagate new seeds, you can always bring seeds back and donate them to the reference desk on the second floor of the Central Park Library. That's how we keep this collection going. Um, so we have a librarian who manages the seeds, and so she'll put out new seeds as we have them. Um, what you see at the seed library is what you get, you know, so if you'd like to see something specific, um, you know, maybe you'd want to bring in some seeds and then other people will hopefully grow them and bring their seeds back too. Um, second is the Lucky Day collection, which I mentioned earlier. So that's like really popular items. You might not have to wait for them. Uh, we have Lucky Day books, but we also have Lucky Day parks passes. So if you're on the waiting list for a state parks pass or a county parks pass, you can always check our catalog and see if any are available to borrow now. Um, I also mentioned all of our events are free. Uh, one thing I did not mention yet, it's called Discover and Go. And so this you can find on the library site under services. Um, Discover and Go is a cool program that a lot of different libraries have. Uh, for this one, you do have to live in the city of Santa Clara to use our Discover and Go service. So most of our services, we don't care where you live. Um, but for Discover and Go, it is a Discover and Go rule that you have to live in a zip code served by that library. So if you live in San Jose, for example, and you have a Santa Clara City card, that's awesome. We're so happy to have you. Uh, but you have to use your San Jose public card to use uh, Discover and Go. So that's just something to mention because usually if you can't get in, that's why. Um, Discover and Go has like free passes to museums and attractions around the Bay Area, uh, which is really neat. Um, they open up three months in advance on the first of the month. So if you're looking for something really, really popular, you definitely want to log on early on that first of the month because things do fill up. Um, and again, because they are super popular, some museums might only let you get like one ticket a year for that museum, but you can get tickets for other stuff. So Discover and Go is really neat. Um, I mentioned that we have parks passes. We also have uh, hiking items so like bear canisters. Um, if you're hiking somewhere that requires like bear safe uh, storage for your food and like your toiletries or other smelly items. Um, we also have hiking poles, hiking backpacks. We're actually getting brand new hiking backpacks soon. So keep an eye out for those. Um, tool library. So we have a great partnership with Silicon Valley Power that allows us to check out tools for home improvement. Um, what else do we have? We have bike locks. So if you come to the library on your bike and you need to lock it up outside, you can borrow a bike lock, but that's just for the day. Um, I mentioned coding kits earlier. Um, yeah, if you have something actually, because some of you have been users for years. So if you have something in the library that you think is really cool or that you think other people might not know about, and you want to put it in the chat, that would be awesome. So maybe you'll share different things than what I'm sharing. Um, and that also reminded me that I wanted to launch another poll. So I just wanted to know, uh, from these things that I talked about. I'm calling them library secrets, but we don't want them to be library secrets. We want everybody to know, which is why we're doing this program. Um, which of these did you already know about? So if you just wanna go ahead and check, did you know that we have free New York Times access online? Did you know that we have parks passes, coding kits, video games and DVDs, discover and go, private study rooms? Did you know all our events are free? And did you know that we don't have late fees? If you could check those, that would just help me figure out what we need to do a better job marketing. And then I'm just going to check the chat and see if people are sharing. Don't be shy. Go ahead and share your favorite stuff. Or if you want to share it anonymously, you can put it in the Q&A and it will be anonymous. Um, I also still don't see any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and just wait a couple minutes while you're typing in. Uh, we do have 25 minutes left. I wanted to leave a lot of time. So if you need me to demonstrate something again, or if you have a question about the catalog, website, resources, please let me know. Um, okay, great. First question, is Consumer Reports available online? So yes, we do have Consumer Reports, um, but maybe not the way that you're thinking of it. So Consumer Reports has an online database um, that I would love to have. I hope we get it eventually. But Consumer Reports has a really nice like searchable online database. Unfortunately, we don't have access to that. But what we do have is the magazines are available online. Um, so it's a little bit clunky. Um, but yeah, if you go to like our online magazines, you can find consumer reports, but again, it's not a searchable database. It's just actually like PDFs of the magazine on the website. Um, but then at least you don't have to come in to look at them. Um, we do also have the paper uh, print version of the magazine. Um, 
Do you provide access to journals and scientific papers for research? Yes. So it's limited because um, like I mentioned in the beginning, we are a public library, not an academic library. So we don't have a lot of super academic or technical stuff. Um, I don't know if, if everybody knows this, but some of those academic and scientific journals are expensive. Like some of those could be $500,000 a year to subscribe to. So um, a, an academic, if you're near a university that allows the public to visit, it's worth calling and asking because universities will have access to a lot of scientific and technical journals. Um, for us, let me go back to the, um, let me go back to the website. Sorry about the switching back and forth so that I can show you how you would find what we do offer. Okay. So if you're here on our website, right, and you go to um, online resources, uh, articles, magazines, and newspapers here, you can see, oh, this went back to subject. But um, if you scroll down here to research articles and more, these are the databases we have where you can search. So you see, we do have some university scholarly journal and magazine articles. They're not all full text, some of them are. Um, but if you go to research, you can see this is what we do have. Um, so a lot of it is geared more toward public interest and won't be super specific, uh, but you know, it's not nothing. Um, so you can go ahead and check these um, and search them to see if that's what you need. If you're in the library, it should just take you straight into the database. If you're at home, you will have to log in with your library card and PIN to get into the database. Um, are there plans to provide induction cooktops or cook sets to check out or for trying out? Have heard of these being available at other libraries? Yes, um, some nearby libraries do have this, like they've worked with uh, other city organizations to check these out. And we don't have these right now. We're always adding to our library of things. Um, so if this is something that you want, I would definitely suggest going to um, on our, uh, sorry, on our website here. Um, where I showed you the contact about us, contact us, suggestions and comments. If there's something you want to see, I would definitely suggest uh, submitting a comment there so that it can get to the right people uh, to see if that's something we can make happen. And I'm just here for more questions whenever you have them. We just got a request, which again is a great thing to put in the suggestions and comments here, um, is to do more adult art and craft events at Central Library. Um, I will say I know um, right now a lot of it is just scheduling, um, trying to have you know evening programs after, give people enough time to get here after work before the library closes and making sure there's a room available. Um, so yes, if there's an adult program you wanna see or a kid program or a teen program, please do let us know um, because we're always looking to add new programs. And of course we want to add things that you want to see. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of, Keep going around the website um, to see if there's anything else we want to show. Um, let's see here. And if you see something you want to learn more about, uh, feel free to shout it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can show you Discover and Go because that's a popular one. So services over here under Discover and Go. So this gives you a little bit of information about it. What is Discover and Go? Free or discounted passes to Bay Area museums and cultural institutions. Like I said, you have to live within the city of Santa Clara. You choose the date you want to go and print out your pass. Um, oh, this is another good point. If you're trying to use a kid's card and it doesn't work, it's because the library card holder must be at least 16 years old. That's another um discover and go rule. So if you're trying to use a kid's card and it doesn't work, that's why. If you just use an adult card or a card of somebody who's at least 16, that's good. Um, and also this part here, you must have photo ID that shows that's usually when you, um, when you show up at the museum, sometimes they want you to show your photo ID. That's not for us. You don't have to show that for us. Um, will this be viewable later for those who came in late? Yes, we are recording this. So, um, Yes, it will be posted on the YouTube channel, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, 
Um, I see that Julia raised her hand. So Julia, I just unmuted you if you want to ask your question. Sorry, that was a mistake. Oh, no Sorry, problem. That, that was an error. That's okay. All right. Any other questions? You have me here for 20 minutes. Okay. Um, not sure if I missed it. Canopy, is there a Canopy or another movie online viewing or streaming service? So we do not have Canopy, unfortunately. Canopy is a great service that some nearby libraries have. And again, I work for the Santa Clara City Library. I love this library. I want you to be part of this library, but you can be part of other libraries too. I have like 10 library cards, you know, because I want to use those resources. So um, nearby libraries do offer Canopy. We do not. We do have Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A. It offers movies. It has movies, music, ebooks, and e-audiobooks. Um, it is going to be more limited than Canopy. Like sometimes they have really good stuff. Like I just found out that we had Past Lives, the Oscar nominee available on Hoopla, which I would not have guessed. So um, the thing with Hoopla that you should keep in mind is that you are limited to four checkouts a month. So just know that if you watch a lot of movies. Um, but again, if you have multiple library cards, you can utilize that resource at multiple libraries. This is the last time I'll switch back and forth, but I'm just going to go back to my slides to make sure I didn't miss anything. Again, if you want to share your favorite thing, feel free, but you don't have to. Um, and then, oh, questions, that's what we're doing now. And then I just wanted to share this if you're, you know, leaving now. Um, if you still have questions, you can call using those numbers I shared earlier, or you can email us, librarians at santaclaraca.gov, and somebody will get back to you. Um, oh, somebody asked what YouTube, because I mentioned that, um, I mentioned that this recording will be on our YouTube channel. So we have a Santa Clara City Library YouTube channel. And so you can find not all of our programs are recorded, but you can find a lot of programs on there. This is also where um, I was showing earlier that we have some tutorials for some of our e-resources and things like that. Um, so I'm going to answer the, I'm going to put the link here in the Q&A answer. Um, so you should see the link there. Uh, YouTube, our username is at City of Santa Clara Library. I'll put it in the chat too, if that's easier. Um, also, when you leave, if, if you're leaving, that's okay. When you leave, a survey is going to pop up from Zoom. If you could fill it out, that's really helpful. Um, this is something that we want to start doing regularly to help welcome new library card users and also just you know, share our not so secrets uh, with people who use the library. So there is a question on the survey about what you would want to see covered in a future orientation. Um, that would really help us out. Also, if there's something that you want to see covered that wasn't covered, you can just ask me now. <laughs> 